Well, hello there and welcome to Planet Keith. On this particular video we'll be looking at two port zone valves that you find in your heating system. We'll give you a rundown of basics, how they work, a bit of fault finding. Um, I've done a bit of a rig uh, that you'll see in the video a bit later on, just to give us how things run and whatever. Um, also, I've videoed some different types of zone valve heads so you can uh, try and get what's in your particular airing cupboard or property or whatever just to get a gist a uh, bit of the wiring but just be wary we are messing with electrics we've got to be very wary um, always turn power off always take fuses out uh, always be safe where possible right as you can see there's quite a few different variations or manufacturers to the two port valve they all do exactly the same job it's just a valve that turns on and off my electrical switch and um, I'll just show you the rig now as we go across I hope you can get the rig it's not the best camera in the world um, this is a two channel programmer which is one channel for your heating one channel for your hot water and you've got your room stat then you've got your cylinder stat you should see these and similar items within your home um, so we all have very similar the dials might be slightly different but it just gives you an idea there's your, there's your main power which is a fuse switch spur generally a 3 amp fuse in there if it's a gas central heating if it's oil it's generally 5 amp fuse um, obviously your control centre or wiring centre which can be in your airing cupboard next to your boiler it all depends how your system is obviously there's the zone valves and obviously we've got some different zone valves that we've seen earlier and obviously there's your pump and obviously the light bulb represents your boiler right as you can see um, I've literally put power to it turned on the switch and I, I'm going to try and zoom into the clock the clock telling the right time of day but none of the indicator lights are saying we won't actually want any heat or hot water and yet the boiler's lit up so obviously there's an, an issue it's not a timing issue um, I, can ex I can explain to you what the problem is um, basically one of them valves there is sending a contact it's either the mic switch has gone faulty or the actual lever mechanism has gone solid and it won't let the valve release right now I've loosened uh, the junction box lid so I'm going to just whip that off so you can see inside um, basically uh, again I'm not sure you're going to pick this up but we're looking for the generally the switch wire from the zone valves is it orange and there's an orange there's two orange there obviously one from each of the zone valves over there. Um, what I'm going to do now is turn power off, be safe, whip fuse out. Right, as you can see now the fuse is out. So what I'm going to do now, and obviously the uh, boiler has gone off because of power, so we'll undo the two orange wires. We'll pull them out. Sorry about the wavy camera there. And what we'll do now, again to be safe, is just make sure that they're away from anything. And what we'll do in a second or two is re-establish power. Right, as you can see, re-establish power. We have got power. Um, we have got no bo boiler light on, but we have got power there. The clock. It's still in the off position, so none of the lights are lit up. So we'll go across to the orange wires. I've got a little screw, a screwdriver that's just going to help indicate what's what. But if we go to this particular wire, is for the cylinder, so the hot water side, and there's nothing happening there. If we go to the heating side, I don't know if you can see that. Right, um, I've turned the lights off so I've tried to make it a little bit so you could see. So 
as you can see there's power there and there shouldn't be any so there's a fault on that particular valve that particular valve has got the white wire if we follow the white wire <laughs> white wire I uh, will come to this particular valve and um, we'll see what the problem is right I'm just going to unscrew the two screws on this particular valve which are the two corners I'm hoping you can see that them two corners there now on other valves like the Honeywell at the side of it if I just generally I'll go round if I can and I'll just show you there's a screw in the top middle there which actually takes the cover off so the screws loose you just pull the header in there you can see a motor and in just I think I'll put screwed over just there there's a screw and just the other side again sorry about the camera I'm not used to holding the camera and trying to just the other side trust me there's another screw and again that head will just pull off uh, on this particular model you can just change the motor which is the silver disc there but sometimes just the, it's not just the motor it's the mark switch inside which has gone faulty right under the two screws on the Danfoss head I can lift that off now and what we can do we can look at two things here I don't know if you can see that but we can see that this particular one has got staining just there running down so this valve body has been leaking at some stage weeping out it would need replacing anyway and also that could mean that the actual twist pin that bit there could be solid but as you can see that is moving I can see with my hands that's moving um, twisting around and all, all basically all that does trying to keep my hands still is in that position it's stopping the flow and if I just generally turn it to that position which is what the motor would do it opens the valve and away we go right okay so we found that this all right the body has been weeping and would need changing um, that is not the cause of the head being a problem so it looks like the micro switch in the particular Danfoss head um, is a problem which means unfortunately change the complete head um, it happens more regular than we all want to admit but it does happen um, and the other issue that can happen which causes a problem and we'll just move something into camera is, is a, that's a very similar body to the Danfoss body and that particular body has been leaking but as you can see I, I, is, I cannot turn I cannot turn that spindle that spindle is absolutely solid unfortunately that shows me in a closed position as we see it there but if it had gone solid in an open position it would have let the um, mag switch continue to be connected which would make the boiler run all the time but on this occasion the spindle over there um, isn't an issue unfortunately it's at ed but obviously finding the problem like we have we'd have had to change the body and the head so we've re-established power um, replaced the head the wiring cover is still uh, off uh, but this is for demonstration purposes only so your cover would be back on but this time uh, but as you can see the clock is now on uh, there's no power to the boiler so now what we'll do is we'll turn the ask for heat on the radiator side which is there so we can now see that light on and now as we can see still nothing happening which is exactly right because as you can see the room stat is turned right down so if we turn the room stat now up 
I hope you heard that click. Now what will happen is this particular valve here will now be open and dead slow and as the motor spins round it hits a mark switch and brings on the boiler. So now the boiler is purring away which the boiler would have brought the pump on. Um, so if now we turn the room stat down hope you heard that click then now the zone valve will be slowly shutting and as it shuts the boiler power will go off and there we go um, so there's not it's not rocket science but it, you have to be wary uh, and if you're changing the body you have to drain the heating system down um, or take the pressure off at least so you can do it quick enough but a lot of time the zone valves are in a behind the cylinder in a cupboard where you can't get to get spanners on so a lot of the time you unfortunately have to uh, drain down so it gives you the time to get in there and get the job done uh, and as I said the zone valves they're all very similar they all do the same kind of job they all they are is like a, a lever valve that's turning on and off as your system requires um, and again, there is only f the four or five wires. The, generally, the fifth wire is just an earth wire, which some companies don't have, have particular on their heads. Uh, I'll do a bit of a diagram. Right, we have the zone valve. I hope you can see that drawing. We've got the wire from it. What a rubbish drawing. Anyway, forget that. So you've got the four wires. You've got your orange, grey, blue, and brown. In the, in the particular zone valve there will be a motor and a micro switch. So if I do a micro switch, which is not the best micro switch in the world. And what we've got basically is, if I do that, that's grey, that's orange, and into the motor you have your brown and your blue. I'm hoping you can see that. So there we have our zone valve, um, that's the head and as you can see we've got the motor there which is the brown and blue wire and then we've got the micro switch which is the orange and grey wire. Um, if, we, if I come down here that's your four, four wires which if you've got your brown, blue, grey and orange. Uh, your brown literally comes from either your clock which is that there, or your room stat, which could be a cylinder stat. Basically, that has the brown to liven up. As that livens up, it will turn that motor. That motor then will hit that micro switch. The micro switch will then connect the grey, which is on the permanent live, to the orange. Then the orange basically will go to the boiler and ask the boiler to come on. Um, I hope that helps. Um, just a PS, obviously when you're working with electrics, always be very safe, they can uh, be very nasty, so always be wary, always turn off, always set the fuse out, always check if you can that there is no power there, and always be safe. Alright, catch you next time, bye.